Well, good morning and welcome to Life Connect. I'm glad that you've come back again and joined us. Uh, you know, this, this week we've been looking at festivals and celebrations and uh, a variety of different people have brought these. It's been great to have Penny uh, share with us for the first time. And uh, I know I really appreciated her uh, as she was sharing yesterday morning. And I'm sure you did too. You know, um, could you just do me a favour? Uh, if you're connecting with us and um, really God's touching your heart as you're going through this, we, we really would value it. You know, every time someone likes the, these posts or even better still, uh, comments on them, even just to say hi, who you are, um, it really, really helps us. And, uh, and, and even better still, share it. You know, if you've got, uh, share it on your own personal Facebook page, share it on your church Facebook page. You know, this is a resource to be used uh, for churches because uh, we know so many people are being blessed and encouraged encouraged and enriched in our lives and uh, we want this to, 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 to grow and to become something which could be a resource that many many Christians and churches across the UK will use. So take that opportunity um, and every time you, you, you like, you share, especially if you, you share and you comment, those two in particular, it raises up on the algorithms and more people get to see it, more people get encouraged. You know, every, every morning I share it on our church a Facebook page and so all our church is blessed and enriched uh, by these and uh, it's, a, it's just a great way to, um, to bless your church. And, the, and your friends and your family. So take that opportunity, please, because it, uh, it really will help us. And I think at the same time, it will be helping uh, so many other people around the UK. You know, have you ever thought what it was all about? Uh, what's this all about? You know, what, what was going on there? You know, have you had those kind of thoughts? Um, maybe something strange has happened, maybe something unusual, something um, out of the blue, uh, something unusual. And um, you know, it happens from time to time, doesn't it? Last week, Katrina and I were, um, we, it was such lovely weather and we, we rearranged our days off so that we could enjoy a really nice sunny day. And uh, we were driving on the road, not far from home, and uh, saw a bit of cardboard on the road, the car in front of us sort of swerved around it. Um, and as I approached it, uh, I couldn't swerve around it because there was a car coming the other way. So I wasn't too concerned. I thought it was only a bit of cardboard. And as I went over it, I realized it wasn't a piece of cardboard. It was sheet metal with a, a lip sticking up, which um, uh, a, f a mile or two down the road, I realized that that bit sticking up and that clunk I heard was it severing our fuel tank. And we had a, a, a massive fuel leak. And uh, that was the end of our day out. We we had our picnic in a garage. <laughs> you know, it wasn't quite what we were expecting. And we looked at each other and went, what was all that about? <laughs> what was going on there? Um, uh, and I still don't know what it was all about. You know, maybe God was protecting us from something. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe we need to have a good conversation with a garage owner. Um, uh, and that was a, a blessing to him. Uh, and, and these things come across our paths from time to time when it's... Um, you know, these questions get raised for us, don't they? And King David um, wrote Psalm 131, and we've been going through the Psalms of Ascent uh, this week. And, um, you know, he was, a, at that point, the, the greatest man in Jewish history, uh, a phenomenal guy, uh, the, the king of the nation. He was uh, very wise and very powerful. And um, he, he shared these words. He says, my Lord, my heart is not proud, my eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have calmed and quieted myself like a wean child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a wean child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord now and always. You see, David, even though he was king, even though he was powerful, even though he was clearly very bright and articulate, can write songs and, uh, and lead a nation. Uh, he recognised he was really humble and he accepted uh, who he was. And, and that's the first thing that we need to do in these times. We have to accept actually who we are. We are the part of God's creation. We are not the creator. And it's important for us just to, to recognise our place and um, basically not get above our station. But then he moved on, and I, I love that uh, second part of verse 1, because in there he said, I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Um, you know, there was that sense that, you know, he, he accepted uh, that there were some things too big 
for us to understand. And, and I think that's really important for us to do. We, sometimes we just have to accept there are some things which are just beyond our understanding. Now, please don't misunderstand me here. Don't, don't, don't uh, hear, me, hear me right. Um, you know, it's important to use our minds. We don't um, park our, our minds at the door when we become a Christian or we start following after Jesus. You know, we, uh, our minds are important and vital. And it's really key uh, that we grapple with the big questions and the issues of life and we wrestle with them and we get our head around them and we um, uh, allow our minds to reflect on these important issues. And I'm so grateful to people like John Lennox and the, the late Ravi Zacharias and in previous generations, people like um, C.S. Lewis, uh, who had minds way bigger than my mind will ever be. And they grapple with these phenomenal issues and they were able to help us all to understand things that otherwise we would not have understood. And um, they brought so much enlightenment to us and we need those people. We need the next generation uh, of John Lennox's and Ravi Zacharias's to be standing up and uh, coming to the fore now and, and to take in their place. Um, so we need all that. But ultimately, you know, David essentially says, I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Because ultimately there will be some things, no matter how intelligent and bright and clever we might be, there's a limit to our intellect. And we, there'll be things that will be beyond us that we cannot grasp, beyond our comprehension. And so we have to just accept that they are beyond us because we are not God and he is. So what do we do then? Well, David tells us what he did in verse two. He says, instead, I have calmed and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a weaned child is my soul within me. <laughs> and so David, um, he, he, he sort of brings this analogy here and he says that when, when I'm like this, I've learned actually to the contentment of being in essentially God's presence. You see, a baby cries every time it wants attention and so every time they feel hungry or upset or whatever else they scream and that noise is so ear piercing that the mother will come and running and they will get their mother's attention and yet there's that period when the mother knows it's the baby needs to be weaned and that baby will be weaned off its mother's milk and it's an unsettling time for the mother but even more unsettling for the child and uh, it can be a bit awkward, but it's good for the growth of the child. They can't stay suckling their mother for the rest of their life. That's not how they were meant to be. And so when the child has gone through that weaning process and has been weaned, it starts to learn that actually it doesn't need to cry out in that same way as it did before. And just to be able to look up and see its mother there, that is enough. And that has that calming effect upon the child, well, most of the time anyway. And that's, David sort of kind of likens that for us. You know, as we grow in maturity, in spiritual maturity, we'll start to learn that contentment in his presence and just to know and have that knowledge that his presence is with us, that's enough. Because we accept who we are. We accept there's things that are too big for us to grasp. But then also that leads us on and gives us confidence going forward in the future. And the last verse, verse three says, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord now and always. And uh, David says, uh, because of all those things, we can then put our hope in the Lord or our trust in the Lord. And that's what we're to do. We're to put our trust in the Lord. And I love that bit where he says now and always. You know, it's like kind of an ongoing thing. We don't just do it on a one-off occasion. We just, it's a repeating cycle. That every morning we wake up and say, today I'm putting my hope in the Lord. Uh, I didn't just do it yesterday. I'm not just going to do it tomorrow. I'm putting my hope in the Lord today. And I can do that because that hope's on a solid foundation because God is trustworthy. Because I've seen God at work in the past, in my life, in other people's lives. I know he's got my best interests at heart. I can be sure that he'll never fail me. And so I put my hope in him today. You know, throughout my life, I'm sure I'm like you, I've had many occasions when there have been things that have happened, I've been perplexed and I've wondered why. 
one occasion was when I was in my 20s and um, uh, we had a, a really good day in our ch local church and a lot of the younger people in their 20s came together and it was to try and uh, prepare us and equip us as potential leaders in the future and people came from other churches and I remember one young man was there called David and he'd come from another church we didn't know him before but he got on really well with us we enjoyed his company uh, he was great fun and after that day in, late in the evening he went home and um, the next day we had our church service a gang of us gathered here for lunch lunchtime the phone rang and um, my father answered the phone came back in and in, he looked really somber and he said do you know what that call was to say that david is dead you know it just we were shocked stunned silence david i mean david had shown great spiritual maturity uh, and godliness and Somehow or other, that young man at 21, in an instant, in a car crash going home that night, which was not even his fault or anything to do, someone just recklessly drove straight into the side of him, cut his car in two and killed him. It was devastating. And I've often reflected upon it and thought, what was that all about? Why did God allow one of the, you know, it, one of his best young people just to go from this scene so soon. And I was perplexed and confused. And yet I've had to learn to say, I don't know what that was about. But do you know what? God's presence for me is enough. And I'm going to choose to keep trusting him today. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of the questions I have in my mind because I know I can trust him. I know he has a track record of being trustworthy. And I know also that one day I will have answers to these questions which at the moment are beyond my understanding. So I don't know where you are. Maybe you're going through one of those periods where you're going, what was all that about? Let me just encourage you just to reaffirm your confidence and trust in God and if you've never ever trusted him just come to him today and trust him with your life and you'll find he is totally trustworthy let's pray Heavenly Father as we come to you this morning there's so many things that come to us and through our lives which do confuse us and do perplex us but Lord this morning we choose to trust you we choose to put our hope in you, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day, because you are the one we can fully trust. We thank you for this. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning, and I hope you have a great day. Join us, if you can, for Church Connect at 12.30. We have some fantastic interviews, uh, really, really good. I know you're going to enjoy it. And please uh, like and share this um, uh, Church Connect and comment and uh, all the ones next week, because we've got lots lined up for next week, starting at 8 o'clock each morning, Monday to Friday. Have a great day and a great weekend. God bless. Bye.